What's up guys, today on The Barfly, I thought that instead of just making a cocktail video with a bunch of cocktails that you should try or doing something seasonal, we should do a technique video. So you will be getting cocktails in this video, but the focus is really gonna be on the technique that we're using in these drinks so that you can go out and apply them to other drinks and stoke up your creativity a little bit. These are just simple advanced techniques that you can use to really up your cocktail game. I hope you guys stick around. So the first technique that we're gonna be doing is acid adjusting. This is something that you guys saw in the video that I did with Garrett Richard. We're actually doing a very similar technique to what we did there. And we're making a cocktail from one of his mentors, Dave Arnold. Today, we're not gonna be acidulating pineapple juice. We're gonna be acidulating orange juice. So the purpose of this technique is to take some juices that are underutilized in the cocktail world or are utilized in sort of a problematic way because they don't have enough citric acid to make them tart enough to stand up to simple syrup. They're a little too sweet. They're too low in those acids. You get these unbalanced cocktails when you use them. So this is a very simple technique where we're just taking some citric acid and malic acid and adding them to a juice like pineapple or orange. Today we're actually doing orange to up the tartness to the strength of lime so that you have all the flavor benefits of orange, but you have all of the acidic benefits of lime juice. So first thing we're going to do is take 100 mils of fresh squeezed orange juice. We know that orange juice is about 0.08% citric acid. So we're going to do a little bit of math. Basically, we know that a lime is 6% acid, it's 4% citric acid and 2% malic acid. So we're just going to take that 0.08 into consideration and do 3.2 grams citric acid. I just take a funnel, throw that in like so. That 0.08 plus a 3.2 would make it 4% citric acid. So we just put two grams malic acid in there as well. And then we're just going to shake to combine. I don't want to make it too fluffy. Let's give it a little taste to make sure it combined. Ooh, man, that's tart and orangey. So before we make the cocktail, I just wanna say that this is something that you can do with any type of fruit juice you want. All you have to do is look up the acid composition of that juice, do the math, and you can figure it out and make anything lime strength. I'll try and find some reference links for you guys and put them in the description below the video. Today's video is sponsored by one of my favorite companies, Shaker and Spoon. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly subscription box service that delivers the craft cocktail experience right to your door. Each box contains three recipes from world-class bartenders, all centered around one spirit. So all you need to do is buy one bottle and Shaker and Spoon does the rest. Each box contains enough ingredients to make four cocktails for each recipe, so 12 cocktails total. And every box has everything that you'll need from bitters to syrups to tinctures, sodas, garnishes, it's all there. And another thing that's really great is that it kind of gets you outside of your comfort zone. So instead of just making the same cocktails that you always make all the time, every box brings you a new booze and new ingredients ingredients and new techniques so you can really get out there and explore the world of cocktails. So click the link below and type in Barfly at checkout or go to shakerandspoon.com backslash Barfly for $20 off your first box. And if you're really sick and tired of making cocktails from this channel, try a Shaker and Spoon cocktail. They're awesome. So first thing we're going to do is grab our tin and a little saline solution here and we're just going to do five drops. It's the 20% saline solution. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of our acidulated orange juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and two ounces of light rum. One drop of vanilla extract. We should standardize that, Marius. From now on, one dribble drabble means one drop. So if I say 20 dribble drabbles, that's 20 drops. Got it? Got it. All right, then we're gonna marry our cocktail. Give it a nice heart shake. Give this guy a strain. I picked the Florida Cognac because it's gonna be nice and clean and a bit dry. It's gonna highlight all the other flavors and not compete. That's what I want for this cocktail. This looks fantastic. Let's give it the old sippy poo. So good. All the benefits of the orange and all the benefits of the lime combined. Perfectly balanced by simple syrup and then you got that nice dry sweetness of the rum. It's really good. Perfectly balanced, really nice. Love this drink. Now, because we only have a dribble drabble of vanilla in here, Marius was dubious as to whether or not it was gonna do anything in this drink. But like the saline, which is enhancing the flavors and making that orange brighter, making some of the notes of the rum a little bit brighter as well, I can absolutely taste the scant 
vanilla undertone, just real, yeah, it's a little bit. So there you have it guys, the Dr. J. So this next technique is something that you guys are gonna be really familiar with. Again, it's something that we did with Garrett Richard back in that Hawaiian Mai Tai episode. And that is to make a saline solution to add salt to your cocktails. Adding salt to your cocktails is really a no brainer. Salt does the same thing in cocktails that it does for food. It enhances flavor. You can do this by just putting a pinch of sea salt into a shaker and shaking, but it's a lot more effective to make a saline solution. And then you can just keep that in your refrigerator and dribble drabble it into your cocktail. Also by making a saline solution, you can more control the amount of salt that goes into your cocktail um, so that you don't overdo it because you can't overdo it. It doesn't happen often, but you can do it. So it's just a good way to avoid that. So we're gonna take 80 mils of water and we're just gonna add 20 grams of salt to that water. We're gonna seal this jar and give it a shake. I'm gonna fill it up into our dropper bottle. And there you have your saline solution. So I just forgot to mention that I usually use something like fleur de sel or sea salt, which gives me the best outcome for this. For this cocktail that we're gonna be doing, I know that you guys know that putting salt in shaken cocktails really enhances the flavor. But did you know that the same goes for stirred cocktails? So we're gonna do a Manhattan uh, because those have a lot of botanical elements and I think that there's a lot in there to enhance so we give the salt something to do in the cocktail. So first thing we're gonna do is five drops into our mixing glass. And then we're gonna do one ounce of sweet vermouth and two ounces of rye whiskey. I'll load this bad boy up with some ice. A Couple few dashes of Angostura bitters. Now let's stir. Give it a strain. You know that the cherry garnish goes in there, but that's not the point of this video, so I'm not even gonna do it. I'm just gonna taste it. Yeah, so the salt just lends like a poppiness to it. Like you even get a little, little tiny bit of salinity on the back palate. Along with just more vivid botanicals inside the sweet vermouth. You also get a little more vibrancy inside the uh, the overholt as well. So all in all, it just took this cocktail and just knocked it up just a little bit. So there we are, the Manhattan with saline. So a while ago, we made a video on technique that we called cocktail hacks. And inside that video, we highlighted a technique called regal shaking. Regal shaking is a technique where you take a peel from citrus, you put it inside your shaker, you shake it, and as you shake it, the ice hits the peel, expressing the oil out of the peel, and it kind of adds that flavor profile into your cocktail. The thing that a lot of people don't realize about regal shaking is that you can regal stir a cocktail and get the same result. So today we're gonna to be making a Negroni and we're gonna be imparting a little orange flavor and a little coffee flavor into it with a regal stir. One ounce of sweet vermouth. And then we do one ounce of gin, one ounce of Campari, the peel of an orange, put it in there, and then a few coffee beans. Now we're gonna add our ice, add some more ice in here, and give it a stir. And we're gonna take our rapidly melting ice, and I'm very proud that I cut this so square, and put it inside our glass like so. And we're gonna drop it in. All right, let's taste this guy. Ooh, wow. Unmistakably orange and coffee. And what's really nice about this is that if you shook these ingredients, you'd impart way more flavor. It's this nice, delicate flavor. So you have the Campari and that bitterness. You've got the botanicals of the gin. And then you have this little lilt of orange and a little bit more than a lilt of coffee in there. So what you have is a wonderfully balanced Negroni with a little bit of orange, which is what you're gonna get from your twist anyway. And you have a little bit of coffee highlighting it all. And there you have it, the Regal Stirred Negroni. All right, guys, last technique of the day. Not a lot of explanation needed. This is just a very good way to upgrade any simple sour that you would make. We're gonna be making a gin sour right now and we're gonna be cutting in a little bit of jam. 
Now there's two ways that you can do this. You can either cut the jam in completely on its own and just use this as the sugar content and make a more tart cocktail. Or you can add in the jam with a little bit of simple syrup and try to achieve more balance. I like my cocktails to be a little bit more on the tart side, so I am going to use the jam as the full sugar content. So what we're gonna do is just three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, two ounces of gin. And we're just gonna do a heaping bar spoon of marmalade. So we're trying to balance out that lemon. Five drops of saline. Add ice to the tin. Give it a shake. And strain it. All right, let's see how much balance I achieved. Perfection. You get all of those marmalade flavors, you know? It's balanced out nicely with the lemon. Lemon being a little bit less sharp than lime is gonna be a little easier to balance. Although you can do this with lime as well. The botanical notes of the Bombay Sapphire really come out. And there is a pronounced rosemary kind of tint to this cocktail. You get the orange marmalade notes, you get the lemon, it's just nicely balanced. It's a great cocktail. So there you have it. Let's call it the Marmalade Sour. All right, guys, I hope that you found this video informational and I hope that it helps you as you go forth and conquer the cocktail world one technique at a time. And I'll see you guys on another time.